I hope this is only going to be two parts because it's not pop on and popping as I thought it would be. Lady Lily, back with another video, and this is the review of The Housewives of Potomac Season 2, um, The Reunion Part 1. So I know this is late. Um, as you can see, I've been out of town and I got back late Sunday. So, didn't have time to watch it and review, so I said I'll do it as soon as I can on Monday. I had to jump back in with life and work and all that jazz, so I'm just getting around to it. So, I said, you know, as long as I guess, as long as I can get it up tonight, we will be all good. Okay, the lighting is not on point. I'm just tired, not in the mood to do all the fancy dancy to get the light and bright so y'all just come on and bear with me and i promise next week it'll be so much better so anyway moving on to the housewives of potomac potomac reunion part one okay so let's talk about the outfit so huh what can i say um i would say overall these dresses were not spectacular if you ever watch housewives reunion these, these, any housewives reunions, for the most part, these chicks be some bad chicks and even bad evening gowns. And, but I felt, you know, I didn't, you know, really didn't, didn't get wowed by the dresses. Um, Monique dress was cute, but I just felt like it was really overbearing especially you know if you're gonna be sitting down which the reunions for the most part you do sit down and the only time you stand up is unless you're getting ready to knock a bitch out but other than that or go off or just storm out but other than that you're sitting down so i really felt monique dress was cute but really like overwhelming to be like simply um sitting down um i thought ashley and Giselle's dresses were like simple, you know, maybe the average dress you might see at a gala or a party or something. Nothing spectacular um, spectacular that was uh, there. Um, Charisse looked nice. I liked her bobbed. Um, her dress, I mean, it was a little bit on the simple side. Um, I thought her shoes could have been a little more better. Um, Robin's dress, actually, it was a cute dress. But I think based on her skin tone and her hair color, that dress actually kind of washed her out. Um, the earrings was a bit gaudy. Um, cute, but I don't think it was for that particular hairstyle. Maybe she would have had her hair more pulled back or up. Um, but other than that, I thought it was really um, gaudy. Um, Karen's dress was not cute at all to me. Actually, like it just smushed her breast down, and like and like Andy said, her breast actually looked this smaller. Um, I did think her um, shoes were cute. I did enjoy um, the shoes, by the way. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just gonna do like little tidbits of um, the show and we'll go there i mean it wasn't a lot to cover tonight i mean a lot covered in this episode so they did address the karen house situation um karen was stating that part of the reason she was um she moved to great falls was for her parents because both of her parents are old, um, elderly and sick um and they were saying you know do the parents live there and and she said no but they have the option to and then she was just saying how you know her parents really didn't care for potomac and her dad was a farmer which i don't know what the hell all that got to do with it um so yeah but we all i don't know if you heard but if you did not hear word on the curve is pretty much that um karen and ray are in some financial woes apparently they owe 1.5 million dollars in taxes and that's um that's they um is um reason to believe that's why they sold their home relatively quickly and took a cash offer to pay off some back taxes that they owe, which they claim is one point five million dollars uh one point four million dollars. The house actually sold for one point five million dollars, and it's also reported that Ray business is also in trouble for um um not for holding on back taxes so 
it kind of would make sense for them to rent because right now they got to um, pay off some debt, shall we? Um, but it probably wouldn't have made sense for them to get such a big, bigger type of ordeal. Maybe I think this would have been a time to downsize because as they said, nothing was wrong with the old house and they were saying, you know, both um, Raven and Brandon were gone. So, you know, I'm sure there were, you know, the parents could have came in and took one of their spare rooms or a guest room or whatever. But yeah, this, you know, I think the speculate, the word that the cat is out the bag that pretty much, um, that they sold that house to pay off some, some on, um, back pay for taxes. So that's what they're at. Um, also Sharice referred, told Karen, she is not the grand dom of Potomac. And she said, actually, you know, they live well. In other words, I got from Sharice what she was saying is like, they live well, but people in Potomac are known to be owning like private jets and yachts and stuff. And she was like, none of them out the group own jets or yachts. Um, so, you know, you know, Cameron pretty much is not the grand dawn or anything. And then Cameron was pretty much saying that, you know, that, that, title was given to her by Giselle in last season and you know she's gonna take it and continue with until she say so so whatever you know Karen it, it is what it is if you having money woes you're having money woes you you know you not the first person to have money woes and trust me you wouldn't be the last person to have money woes and then it also um in terms of Karen you know he was just saying how she just seems like a little more you know set free um you know, since she revealed about her situation, um, uh, her rape. But one thing I really didn't care for what she did, she pointed out that Robin uh, was also a victim of rape. And it's like Robin like lit up, like almost like, bitch, why are you telling him that? And then she, um, you know, Robin was like, yeah, I was in high school, freshman in high school, which is so, un it was so unfortunate. And like, you know, I, you know, hope, you know, to educate and I don't, you know, want to teach my boys you don't force you know sex upon women and all that good stuff but I you know I was a little taken back because how did uh Cameron you know want to know how did Cameron know that you know Robin wanted that revealed to people you know maybe they had a bond and she came to her in confidence and she might not you know been able to you know wanted to share and reveal her story because when that had came out in the episode that was something she really wanted to share so I kind of felt that she put um, um Robin on the spot in terms of revealing that Rob Robin was a rape victim but speaking of Robin um we touched based on a one, she said that her one is making progress, and apparently it's not good enough. It sounds like it's just bull crap. She said they they are having sex here and there, but it just sounds like you know probably ain't much change. We'll get to see in the next episode when Juan com one comes out. Uh, she said everything that. Juan saying is is she heard before and she said I think it was just caught off guard because the way he said it was a, a little bit shocking and she's just tired of people being in her business and she wish everybody would leave it alone and she's fine she's fine you're not fine Robin you're not fine you're actually in denial you should have got that help from that counselor and you need to move on because here's the thing why if uh, why get divorced and do all that stuff if 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 you're not gonna you know let it be you know like I'm just thinking that Juan's there because it's just financially convenient. That's that's all. You know, Robin's just like, if this nigga gonna be here, let him be here, we'll make it work. But I think at the end of the day, Juan is just there because it's financially convenient. Because Robin, apparently she gets checks from the show, she works, she's doing some PR stuff, and then she's doing some other things. If you follow her on Instagram... She's like doing like financial wealth information workshops and all that type of stuff. So I guess she's getting a little corn from there. But yeah, I mean, honey, y'all, who don't want to be in love? Who don't want to share their world? And I'm like, he wouldn't brought that up if he really wasn't serious about that. So um, that is that with that. Um, Sharice was cutting Giselle up left and right, just bringing out her truths. 
um, she was saying, um, Sharice mentioned that um, Giselle and her husband was pretty much cheating on each other. It wasn't just a simple, you know, G you know, Giselle got cheated on because, of course, you know, Sh Giselle brought up the thing about Sharice dating this guy who is a fireman, but, you know, Sharice came back and cut her up saying that pretty much, you know, she was cheating on um, Jamal Bryan as well. We got to meet um, Giselle's new boo, who is Sherman. He's um, hanging out on the set. Um, so, yeah, he seems like a sweet guy. I don't know if he's like wild and crazy like Giselle want them to be, but he just seemed really sweet and polite. So we, I guess we'll get to see how that works out in season two. Um, you know, he was, you know, Giselle was like, yeah, he's not into all this camera and he's kind of shy and all that stuff. And I got that from him too. So yeah. And then Sharice even cut and dug a little further by saying, yeah, I know Sherman, and yeah, I'm I'm good friends with his ex-wife. <laughs> and then, so I, I took, like, that was a little dig as well. And then, you know, Giselle said, yeah, I know his wife, too. And it's like, it's not a big deal, and y'all, like, not friends like that. Um, Monique, I felt like Monique got a little vocal um, this time around. She's pretty much, you know, saying how she felt about the girls, the situation. Um, it also, you know, um, Andy asked, you know, talked to Monique about how she felt about, you know, her mother-in-law calling her a heifer. And she said, you know, my mom, mother-in-law always talked trash. And she said, you know, we were just as shocked about the things she said because she said her, her husband was sitting there having their drinks and they was watching the show. And it was kind of, you know, taken aback you know, about what she said. And she also had to mention that, you know, they had, you know, went to buy her mom a car, her mother-in-law a car, and, you know, they gave it to her. She said, thank you. And she said, actually, that was the last time she had heard from her. So pretty much she hadn't talked to her um, mother-in-law in about a year. Um, so, I, which is, hey, you know, it is what it is. It's like, I'm married to your son. I'm not married to the mom. So, you know, it is what it is. I guess they can, you know, work that out maybe in the future. But the mom just do seem really hard on Monique. I don't understand, you know, if a celebrity marry a person who's not a celebrity, you know, I don't know what they expect that person to do. Of course, the celebrity is going to have the money and, you know, be the head and lead financially. So I don't know what the mom, you know, wants her to do because it's like she take care of the, the the kids pretty well she's all about upkeep of the home and you know she's like you know trying to handle her husband's business and the endeavors so i you know don't know and monique also um did a rap she um rap did a little summer cute little rap which was a sum a summary of the season and I thought it was pretty cute. She refers to Karen's move. She um, refers to um, Giselle's dating life. And she was saying how Robin can't stop talking about one. But it was a little cute. It was, you know, it was kind of cute. I thought Sharice was kind of quiet um, this season. So, um, not season, but this episode. Um, they started to get on Ashley. And she was just comparing herself. She was pretty much saying, like, Oh, I'm not like these other people because um, out me and maybe Monique and Karen are the only ones that are um, loving and are loving on our mans and being loved by our mans. So she kind of took a dig at the rest of them. You know, she said, I, I want to stay in a mess, a mess affair, whatever, every 20 years or four or five years. So she was taking digs to the other ladies and pretty much was just saying, you know, the difference between them and her is that she's actually trying to make an effort to work out the issues of her marriage, not just sit and let things fester. So I'm trying to think of anything else. Not too much cackling, not too much, um, you know, back and forth. So, yeah, I mean, that was pretty much it for this time around. So the men, I believe the men are coming on for next week. So we'll get to see some perspectives, see what Juan's thinking, What's on Michael's brain? What's on Ray's brain? Ray's um, brain? 
So that's pretty much it. Not too much to give on this episode. That is it. That is all. Stay tuned for more videos. Like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully Car Talk with Lady Lily will reemerge sometimes this week. We'll try for tomorrow. If not tomorrow, I'll make sure I give you an episode this week. But like I said, I got to get back in the habit of returning back to things to normal. I was on vacation last week, so I was getting ready for, you know, not only our family reunion trip, it was the 4th of July holidays and had some other things going on, which, you know, hopefully I can be sharing relatively soon what that is about. But, um, yeah, stay tuned. Have a good evening.